Today we're talking about the two greatest technology threats to your family. I'm Ann Laricello and I'm here with Mitch and Ray, co-owners of Cybersecurity LLC. Thanks for being with us. Now this sounds like a big statement, but it's true. Sure. Uh, the biggest threat probably is your phone. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years ago, people used computers and they were not 24-7 glued to right. some kind of electronic device. Right. Nowadays, people, especially teenagers and kids, are glued to their device, you know, except when they're physically asleep. <laughs> yeah. you know, the challenge is the security on phones is pretty limited in the grand scheme of things, and it makes a very easy attack vector plus the fact that people go visit all kinds of websites and do all kinds of, of things, install all kinds of applications on their phones, and none of those applications and none of those websites are terribly secure. So what do we need to be doing in order to combat that? Again, if it's something we don't even know if this is a website that's been compromised, anything like that, what do we do? Well, the number one thing is make sure that your phone is patched r religiously, and one of the challenges is that some of the phone manufacturers are not very good about that. But for example, if you have an Apple iPhone, Apple is very good about pushing patches to people's phones. And sometimes it can take as long as a month because there's a lot of iPhones out there. But you can go in there and say, you know, check for patches and see if there's something there. So that, that's number one. Number two is don't install everything that you can find. People love installing apps. And in fact, the app industry wants you to do that. The reality is you should only install the minimum number of apps that you need to do what you want to do. And if you stop using something, you're probably less likely to patch it, so uninstall it if you're not going to use it anymore. So there's two threats. Mitch just covered, right, your phone, that's one threat, right? The other one, we're talking about primary threats to you and your family. So you got your phone and you got social media. Uh -huh. These are the two. And why are these threats? Well they have all this information about you and your family and we are giving them information we're putting information out there on ourselves constantly which is not secure so attackers at that point can get this information can cobble together all the elements of our lives and can attack us when we talk about the threat what am I talking about? I'm talking about threats to your safety, threats to your money is what we're talking about, threats to your family. Those are the threats and those are the devices that have the access into our lives. And this is why, again, we must take these issues seriously and do the things we need to do to protect ourselves. So besides just shutting down our phone, which you know nobody's going to do what do we need to do in order to protect ourselves and our family and our money well you can shut it down at night right <laughs> That's true. okay you can shut it down and why is it on why is it connected all the time why are you al allowing people from the other side of earth into your life 24 7. you can control some of these things you can control whether or not you participate in social media you know now everyone is addicted to the the juice they get Get from logging on and looking at their friends and seeing the details and and whatnot you and these de, these applications are designed to addict you that is what they're designed to do in these companies Google Facebook Twitter these these companies they don't charge you for what you're using for the application they're not charging you because they're collecting your data and then they're selling it and they're using it and they're using it against us if we let them do that. So what you can do is you can be, now we can get into the weeds and we can tell you how to configure your phone. We can tell you all kinds of little details, which is not the purview of this particular interview, but we can tell you up front, you need to be aware. You need to be concerned about these issues and take action. And you can get much more information about what to do and how to patch your phone and how to configure your phone and how to turn the security settings and all that kind of stuff on your phone uh, and, and what not to do with social media. But you need to be aware. And if you're responsible for your children and their access, their use of this phone, this telephone that you've bought for them for 50 bucks or 100 bucks, and now they've got this phone and they connect to the world on this phone and they start entering all their personal details in there, what kind of parent are you to allow this to happen, okay? I mean, it's your responsibility to keep, to keep them safe and not make them vulnerable to the attacks that they can be, can be achieved through this device. 
Well, first of all, I want to know where you got a phone for $50. A, <laughs> u a used phone. You can get one today, <laughs> you okay? Go. You can get an iPhone 6 today for 50 bucks on the phone, on, on, the, on, on the web. And so, and a lot of parents, that's what they buy their kids, mm -hmm. right? So they can equip their kids with these devices. All right, I got it. But now you've got this tool in their lives. When you talk about social media, though, uh, we've been hearing a lot about Facebook, you know, political attacks, things like that. Are, is it being hyped up by the media too much, or are we just not taking it seriously enough? So I think there's, there's two kinds of, of things that we see in social media. So one kind of thing is the Facebook attack you're talking about. The other is uh, uh, a, uh, an attack where people go after things like for professionals using LinkedIn mm -hmm. to go understand what it is that this person does, who they know, who they're connected to, so they can now go off and masquerade as somebody who, who pretends to be someone you know, and then you can go and do something like, very simple, click on a link because you think it came from somebody that you know. Oh, sure. The, the whole idea is how much information can they get about you to go figure out how they're gonna launch an attack. You know, one of the things we're seeing is people talk about going on vacation. Right? Well, if you talk about going on vacation, the attackers know your house is empty. Yeah, yeah. And it's a great time to break in because you're not going to be there. And you may not even know that you've been had for a couple of weeks until you get back from vacation. Right. So oversharing on social media and oversharing on things like LinkedIn are really a big problem. And the challenge is, as Ray said, is an addiction. And so how do you go off and not do that? So how do we teach our children about how important this is? Because if we're informed, we know how to do that. Children don't know, so what is what is an easy way to break it down for kids? And you just said the key, say if we're informed, then what do we do? You're right, if the parents are informed, if the parents are alerted, if the parents care, mm -hmm. all right, then your obligation is to teach the children, mm -hmm. to train the children. Kids don't have to have a phone when they're 12 years old. They don't have to have a phone, okay? Now there's a lot of social pressure to get that phone, I understand, and I, and I get that. And, and it does have certain utility value, you know, to, to know where your kids are, give them communication to you, et cetera, et cetera. There is value in there, but they have to be taught what the dangers are. And it takes a little bit of time. You have to be informed and you teach your kids. You've gotta be involved. We all have to be cyber warriors at our own end, right? We said this is two major threats, phones, social media. Those two enable social engineering. They enable, and that's the term for conning people, attacking people is social engineering. And our defense is to be informed and to proactively act to protect ourselves. If we don't act, you could be one of those days where you wake up, you check your bank account, and that thing is empty. Yep. That thing is empty, and then whoa, what happens to your family then? Well, I was too lazy. I just didn't care enough to get involved in this. I didn't care enough to pay attention. Is that some kind of an excuse? Who you can tell that to? So I think one of the other things that in the social uh, media thing is this whole issue of uh, sending compromising pictures to for teenagers. Sure, yeah. Where they go off and send selfies, and and then you know the selfies come out, and there's all this peer pressure and bullying and all that stuff. So that's a, another really big challenge for for. Uh, parents to teach their kids what they should and shouldn't do. And that information never goes away. Yeah. It's yeah. out there forever. Okay, whatever it is, it's out there forever. And when is it going to show up again? Companies are already using social media to screen people for jobs. Already. Yeah. Okay? So and it's only going to get worse. So the alarm flags should be up in parents. How do I protect my kids? How do I teach them? How do I convince them that saying the wrong things um, to their buddies and to anyone else can really come back to not only damage them, but damage the entire family. So there was an app that was released not that long ago where you took a picture of yourself and it would age you. It would show you what you were uh -huh, going uh -huh. to look like in a few years. And after so many people had done it, it was found out that it that was actually uh, created by Russians. So what do Who we Who would have thought? Yeah, it, right, exactly. <laughs> so what kind of information though, what kind of research do we need to be doing before we even just download an app? Because that is so simple. Press a button, you've got the app. Well, it's a challenge because for the most part, we don't know what the origins of a particular application are. Mm -hmm. Even if it looks like it's an American company, it may not be an American company. And we also don't know where the app was developed. And we don't know uh, what kind of due diligence the people who were paying for the app but decided to outsource this to a development team in China, because after all, that's cheaper and we probably ought to go do that. 
um, we don't know what kind of due diligence they did on, on the app before they released it. So it, that is a real challenge. And the best best you can do is is you know if you do Google searches, if you go go out on social media and ask people of their experience with the apps, um, then that's probably about the best you as an individual. As a business, you actually need to do penetration testing. But as an individual, really all you can do is ask around, and then you know if you're if you're not using an app, uninstall it. Okay. Well, thank you. This has definitely been a wake-up call, hopefully, for a lot of parents in order to relay this information to their children. Thank you again. And if you would like more information on this, you can either visit the YouTube site or you can visit cybersecurity.com. And remember, security is spelled with a C.